Can I begin? A pleasant good afternoon to all. Welcome to our virtual event on seed processing and importance of a seed of a national seed bank. My name is Wayne Charles. I am the Agricultural Assistant too at the National Seed Bank under the Agri Services Division. Okay, so the National Seed Bank. The Shagamas Agricultural Development Project, CADP, was established in 1971 by the government of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago in collaboration with, with the Federal Republic of West Germany on approximately 200 acres of land in Tucker Valley, Shagaramas. The main program at CADP concentrated on commercial production of true to type seeds of local commodities. Right, so that's a history of the National Seed Bank in terms of where we started in 1971. The seed unit at Shagaramas was relocated to El Carmen Station when the mega farm began utilizing the site in June 2009. In 2011, due to the closure of the mega farm project, Cabinet by Minute 3289 of December 15, 2011, approved the lease approximately for 100 acres of land at Tucker Valley, Chagaramas. In 2020, CADP was officially renamed to the National Seed Bank, NSB, under the Agri Services Division of the Ministry of Agriculture, Land and Fisheries. So there you can see the history and the transition of CADP to now the National Seed Bank. Okay, so one would ask the question of what do we do? What is done at the National Seed Bank? The seed bank is responsible for the production of true commercial seeds for local for the local farming community and research and non-traditional non crops. The facility reduces the nation's dependency on expensive imported seeds. Production of high quality seed material for, like corn, pigeon peas, bodhi, sorrel, pumpkin, okra, melangen, hot pepper, and other local vegetables. We also preserve and conserve key vegetable seeds under cold storage conditions. We also conserve root crop germplasm. Provision of seed material for disaster mitigation, both locally and regionally. Production of root crop plant materials such as cassava and sweet potato. But one would ask the question, what is the importance of a seed bank? Why do we have a seed bank? Well, a seed bank is basically a place where seeds are stored to preserve genetic diversity for the future. And when you think of storing for genetic diversity, you think of maintaining the quality. So low humidity, low temperature is critical. So we're looking at 25 to 30 percent relative humidity, as well as five to ten degrees, temp a temperature of five to ten degrees it is optimal in order to preserve that genetic viability. Right. So when we look at the National Seed Bank, you would think one would ask the question: What are our key activities? Right. So seed processing is a preparation of harvested seed for marketing to farmers. And in terms of our key activities, we're looking at crop selection, harvesting, which also entails wet or dry processing, threshing, which also entails cleaning, drying, packaging, labeling, and storage. So those are the key activities done at the National Seed Bank. First thing we go to is crop selection. The practice ensures crop quality is thorough is thoroughly maintained. The efficiency to efficiently efficiently select crops, one must be aware of the desired qualities of the crop. So in other words, you're looking from the stage of selection, you're looking to get that quality, you're looking for a specific type of seed, you're looking for a specific type of crop from the point where you're selecting. So you inspect the field thoroughly at the flowering stage and at maturity removing rogue type off types, identify crops with the, the desired traits for growing, collect identify crops before the main harvest, and process separately. So you're looking at, at this stage, 
this selection stage is where is critical for the start and end of your quality. So, yes, it's all good and well to, to state the good things and the importance of a national seed bank, but it starts with crop selection. Right, seed harvesting and processing. Seeds can be harvested by wet or dry processing. Wet processing is used when the mature seeds is enclosed in a fleshy or berry. So examples of this would be hot peppers and melon gen and also pumpkin. Corelli could also be added to that list. Dry processing, use the harvest seeds that are already matured within the seed or bearing part of the plant. Examples of dry processing would be corn, pigeon peas, bodhi, okra and sorrel. Shortly, I will show I will show a demonstration of the dry processing when what we do for corn. But we go in now to wet processing where we will go through the process to harvest hot peppers. Wet processing extract seeds from fruit by cutting, crushing, or soaking the fruit for one to two days. Wash thoroughly and remove mucilage. Seeds will settle. Waste material will float. Do not allow the seeds to soak for lengthy periods. To dry, clean, to dry clean seeds in a thin layer across a surface, so you use cotton towels or paper is accept that which is considered to be acceptable. Place in direct sunlight or well ventilated, moisture free areas for the seeds to dry. Usually we use sun drying or oven drying. So you're placing it in an area that is well ventilated in order to not add moisture to the seeds that, because you're already in the process of re removing moisture, you don't want to add any more. Right, so this is a basic demonstration of what we do for hot peppers. So you start with harvesting the ripe mature peppers. So you put in the peppers in bins, and then you would fill the bins one to, depending on the amount of seeds you have, so you're looking at a one to three ratio, and then you use a wood mallet, and you would mash the peppers into a mash. So you're seeing then, in, so the first three petiers would be, you put it into the bins, and the next three petiers you'll see the mashing, and with those you'll also see that we can, we can leave it for one to two days in order to, for the seeds to separate from the mash. The seeds sink to the bottom, and the stems tend to float. Also, sometimes you would get immature seeds floating to the top. And then you would drain the seeds and skins or float the top. So that really and truly the desired seed would be at the bottom of the bin. And you would be doing this three to four times until the desired result is achieved. Pour the seeds into a bucket and fill with water again for, for the last stage of separation leaving the seeds to be settled at the bottom. So here you will see by the time the seeds are cleaned and, and can be placed on trees, and again, we mentioned in cotton towels and paper to dry. So you're looking at drying the seeds and then you're placing it in trees for either oven drying and, or in the case of the picture that you're seeing on screen, you will be seeing sun drying. The seeds are dried until they are nine to 10% moisture content. They are then placed in a seed processing machine three times and ready for before it's ready for packaging in a 10 gram size. So you're looking at running it through this machine at, at least three times in order to receive the desired result in terms of being clean and in no having no trash within the seed. So it will look marketable and that will also ensure that it will be stored properly. So now we're moving on to dry processing. Dry processing can be done manually or mechanically. Manually will be is basically going into the field with, with cutting implements or using your hands and harvesting the crop and mechanically obviously is by the use of equipments. So after harvesting dry pods should be threshed. Threshing is a process of removing seeds from the plant and breaking up remaining plant material. Threshing may be done by machine or hand as I, as I mentioned. To dry spread clean seeds in a thin layer across the surface. Again, you use cotton towels or paper, which is acceptable, place in direct sunlight in a well-ventilated moist area free from any moisture. So you're looking to get that desired moisture content, right? 
So now we will do a video showing the harvesting process at the National Seed Bank, which is mechanized for the production of corn. Here you can see the harvest. This is a combat So what is actually being done here is that the corn is being happening and the machine actually uses the first basic level of traction and it's stored in the body of the machine. But as you can see, as the traction process is taking place, the seed is being separated from the traction material, which is the next level of the machine, and the seed is being sent forward to trailers. So as you can see in the video. Right, so threshing. I will now show a short video on threshing, which is also called threshing at times, which is the process after, as I mentioned before, after harvest, harvesting dry pods, they are threshed to remove the seeds. Right, so drying is the next step that we are moving on to. The, this is the process of elim the elimination of moisture from the seeds, also called drying. After threshing, seeds are dried to a specific moisture content in order to maintain viability and vigor during storage. At the National Seed Bank, seeds are dried via an electric oven, a propane dryer, or via the sun. So you're looking at three options to get the seeds to that moisture content that you're looking for. Dry should be done immediately after harvest. It, you should not prolong the drying process. Drying must be done a few hours after harvest and continue without interruption until the seeds are reached the desired moisture content. Poorly dried seeds can deteriorate quickly, and this is because of the growth of mold, heating, and enhanced microbial activity. So you're looking at a short window. You're looking at as soon as you have the seeds, you want to start the process of drying. You want to start the process so that when you reach your storage, you don't allow any opportunity for anything to compromise the quality of your seed. So the drying process is critical and it's based on time. So you're looking at something that is has a small window to operate. Right, so when you're looking at drying also, each seed has a specific moisture content that you harvest the seed at, and there's also a specific moisture content that you store the seed at. So in terms of corn, you harvest at 20 to 25 to 30%. With corn, if you harvest the corn with the moisture content being too high, you can, you can end up with the seeds being too moist, and when it goes to the threshing, the threshing or trashing stage, you can have damaging of the seed. And same thing would happen if you go below the 25% moisture content, the seeds could get dry and start cracking. So you're looking at reducing the amount of viable seeds you have in the end, because what would happen, these small pieces would no longer be viable and could no longer be used for planting. So with corn, you're looking at 25 to 30% moisture content at harvest, but when after you harvest it now and you go through the process of drying, you're looking at a moisture content of 10 to 12% before storage. 
Bodhi is 20% to 25% at harvest, 9 to 10% at storage. Sorrel is 18 to 20% at harvest, and you're looking at 8 to 9% at storage. Pigeon peas, 20 to 25% at harvest, 9 to 10% at storage. Hot pepper, hot pepper, melanjah, and okra are all harvested at 15 to 20% moisture content, and they are all stored at 8 to 9% moisture content. So if you notice, each seed has a specific content and all of this is to maintain the vigor and the viability, which we spoke of before. Because really and truly, you, you could do well at harvesting and if you don't reach the correct moisture content, you will end up with problems with storage, you'll end up with mold developing, you could end up with the seeds being compromised where basically the viability of the seeds will be poor. Right, so after drying, well, in terms of drying, we, you're looking at various ways to deal to get these numbers. So we know we know talking about what moisture content you want to get, but how you determine this moisture content? Well, at the National Seed Bank, we have two testers. We have a portable tester, and we have what we consider a stationary tester. The portable tester is carried to the field. You take your samples and you get your moisture content reading from the device itself. The, the stationary one, which is the one on the right. We have that station in the seed processing area, which we refer to as the silo, and you carry your seeds. Each seed has a, a specific code in order to determine, and you're, you're using a specific amount of seed. So like, for example, corn would be 100 grams, melon gen maybe 20 grams. So you're looking at a specific amount of seeds. The machine has all the information on it, so you're putting the correct amount of seeds and you get your moisture content reading. So going back to the previous slide, all these numbers, will be determined by these two pieces of equipment. So you're looking at the portable moisture, con moisture test on the left and a stationary one on the right, giving you these numbers, because how else would you know what is the correct moisture content? You can't really guess it by just looking at the crop. You use these devices to help you get those figures in. Right, packaging and labeling. At the National Seed Bank, one seed, ha one seed have attained the correct and desired moisture content, they are weighed and packaged. Once filled, seed packages are sealed and labeled. Labeling should be done to identify the crop, its variety, packaging date, batch number, germination percentage, weight of the package, and storage instructions. Why would these things be important? It could be obvious, but it's really to tell if the customer, the client, the person purchasing the seeds, what they're working with, what is they are purchasing. So the variety will tell you what type of seeds in terms of specific variety of let's say pepper corn packaging it will tell you when it's packaged because each seed will have a, a viability time it will have a window so if you're looking at something packaged 10 years ago that wouldn't be good so you're looking at that information for the customer batch number germination percentage weight of the package and storage instructions would be also be useful information for obvious reasons in terms of packaging material, we use brown bags for bulk storage, crocus bags for bulk storage. So in, term, in the case of corn, we may not package the corn in small packages at the time of harvest and after the drying and threshing. We may, have, we may package it in brown bags or crocus bags, store it in the cold storage facility, and then we would re reintroduce it into the production cycle to get packaging for small and labeling at the small sizes that is used for commercial seed. So we're looking at also, that is where the next thing, the next two storage items come in plastic bags. Glass jars are used in the cold storage facility for specific crops in terms of planting material. And currently, some of the things that the research division does in terms of storage bias, they use a lot of glass jars. Right. So we're speaking of storage, but what temperature would you want to store these seeds at? Seeds should be stored at 5 to 10 degrees Celsius. Currently, the National Seed Bank, our school room stores the seed at 4.5 to 4.8. So approximately that 5 degrees, that is what we store it at. The storage environment should be kept cool and dry and free from insects and rodents. So periodically, we would spray around the cold room facility with various insecticides and we keep the area clean in order to prevent the infestation or potential infiltration of insects or rodents. But also you need to understand that insecticides and fertilizers should not be stored with the seeds. So the cold room shouldn't have any fertilizers in it or any insecticides. 
because seeds can be hydroscopic, meaning that they could pick up these things and it could actually obviously basically make the quality of the seeds worse. So it can make it could be actually detrimental to that quality that we're speaking of. Right, so we have come to the end of the presentation. What I would want to leave you with is our last statement, basically. I think of five things that are important, factors that affect seed longevity. We're looking at seed type, so that is where we spoke about crop selection. We're looking at seed quality. We're looking at the integrity of the protective seed coat, seed moisture content, and storage environment. So all of those things we spoke about in this presentation, so you're looking at maintaining that genetic viability, the genetic quality that we speak of from the start. So that's the end of the presentation. Thank you. Now we move to the stage of questions. Right, I've seen a question here by Sharon Rupsing. Good day, are the seeds used, are the seeds treated with any chemicals? No, we do not currently treat seeds with chemicals. So in other words, I mean, there's always, always benefits to using fungicides and insecticides to treat seed. Well, to treat the seed in order in terms of storage, but currently we don't treat any seeds and our viability is, is, is pretty good. The, the germination percentage is not bad. And the benefit of not treating the seeds is you can handle them easily with your hands. You can store them because really and truly that five to 10 degrees we talk about in terms of storage. So when, uh, when a customer buys a pack of seed, they can put it in the fridge. They can put it in the crisper in the fridge with all your other food items because there are no chemicals in the seeds. So that is the benefit of what we do. So currently we do not treat the seeds with any form of chemicals. So you can store it in the fridge. You can actually hold it with your bare hands, no problem. So that I hope that answers that question. Another question is someone asks where would the seeds be available? Well, we're looking at the National Seed Bank in Chagarama, Stucker Valley Road. And we're also looking at St. Augustine Nurseries, which is on Farm Road Crip, and we also sell seeds in various outstations. Currently, the most the most restocked stations are La Reunion, St. Patrick East, and St. Patrick West. We also have seeds available at Mapper Farms, which is also under the Agri Services Division. Seeing another question from Pasha Ali: Can the seeds be stored in a fridge door? Well, yes, that's what we know. Speak well, that's what I know to tell you about it. You can store those fridge safely in your, in your refrigerator. No worry for chemicals, and that refrigerator will keep it at that desired temperature. Why I would say the crisper, the crisper in the fridge tends to have less relative humidity because remember in the presentation, I talk about 25 to 30 big percent relative humidity. You're looking to store the seeds, and that part of the fridge, the crisper should be a little less. Some some refrigerators have an adjustment for that, so you have tried, you put the humidity as low as possible and you can store the seeds in there for a very long time. And in terms of time for seeds stored, I saw a question in terms of time. We're looking at two to three years, for, but corn is two years, so the other seeds will be three years in terms of storage. That is the time you're working with. Once stored under the proper conditions, those seeds will be viable if they're stored in your refrigerator or any form of cold storage at least two to three years. That is what we're looking at. Well, I think that's all the questions today. You all can continue to send questions to the Facebook Live. We will try to respond to them shortly. Thank you for tuning in to our presentation. This virtual event has come to an end. Oh, he's fun here.